Well, despite appearances, the Beltway is not entirely impenetrable. Just a few weeks ago, Senator Max Baucus, tasked by the president to lead the process of health care reform, said that single payer was definitively off the table and no single payer witnesses would be heard in hearings. Well, physicians and nurses and others protested and were arrested. The sidewalk, folks. The sidewalk, please. The sidewalk. The sidewalk. Best the sidewalk. The sidewalk. The sidewalk. The sidewalk. The Washington from all over this country on this day of action to speak the truth. Our system of health care is a national disgrace. We're here today at the beginning of a new era of change driven by a new national movement of our own power. We are going to make sure our patients are the ones that also speak with us, with one voice, that we need health care and we need safe staffing ratios. You can hear me, yeah. and I can hear you, yeah. and if you make a noise loud enough, every single congressman on this hill will soon hear all of us. Yeah. And guess what? Eric Massa may have been right. Just possibly some sound has been heard. This week, Dr. Margaret Flowers of Physicians for a National Health Program will participate in Senator Kennedy's committee hearing. And this week, Congress convened its first ever hearing to examine the single payer option. Jerry Jenkins, co-president of the California Nurses Association, was there. She's joining us now from Washington, D.C. Hi, Jerry. I, I think it's great that we were able to make this breakthrough, and, and we just reiterated how if we're really looking at quality, accessibility, and um, cost, as Obama has said he wants to address in any kind of health care reform, single payer is the absolute best way to address that. And now, so who we, were some of the other witnesses there with you at the hearing? Well, Dr. Marsha Angel, who's a former editor of the New England Journal, who is a physician uh, in the medical school at Harvard, and Dr. So from Philadelphia, and uh, who's um, a single-payer advocate, and one other person whose name slips me, <laughs> who um, was a proponent of uh, the other side addressing the issue. And we had a really good um, a hearing with, with this Congress and really put forward a lot of really good information on why this is the best possible plan to now address all those key issues that we're concerned about. You spoke. Who was listening? Well, there um, was a lot of people there in the in, in the hearing, and um, there were a lot of Congress people there, and it, I think we got the message across. And you know, we just can't afford to let Americans die needlessly from a lack of health care in this country, and to have these outrageous costs that provide so little um, quality outcome on the other end. And so, it's going to be a really important. Um, it's a really significant day that we've made that breakthrough and we're actually having a hearing. Like you said, just a few weeks ago, it was, we were told unequivocally it's off the table. And so I think the message for those of us who support single payer is to keep the heat on our congressional people, that this is what the American public wants, that it's important to get this agenda moved forward. Now, what kind of questions did you get asked? Well, there were questions about um, quality and cost. Um, we talked to the issue of, of um, accessibility, how many mi mi millions of people in this country don't have health care, and, of course, the millions who are underinsured, and how much more cost-effective it is to provide care through a single-payer system, as well as how there's a primary emphasis on prevention in a system like this. Yeah. Any clearly antagonistic questions? Um, not really. There were some conservative Republicans who spoke to their uh, feeling that um, giving, getting the government involved is a big mistake. But, you know, there's so much evidence to refute that in other countries where health care outcomes are so much better than ours that um, it's a hard, hard, it's a hard um, argument to make anymore, I mm. think. Now, did you get the feeling there have been, you know, I think 50 events held around the country organized by single payer groups? You've got two state Democratic conventions, Massachusetts and, Mass uh, and California, who have passed resolutions uh, in favor of single payer. Did you get the feeling that the congressional representatives there, the congressmen okay. and women there, had been <laughs> hearing from their constituents on this issue? Well, I think they have been hearing from their constituents. We did hold 50 rallies across 
across the country in the last month. I think there is a groundswell, and they are hearing hearing from the people that they listen to the most, which are their constituents back in their yeah. districts who elect them. Because this is interesting, because what we've heard a lot on this program is the is the discussion between the single payer advocates and the people who are back in the public option within the the, the Kennedy and what is possibly the Barack Obama plan. Um, what what the single payer advocates have said is, you know, we need to keep the heat on if you're going to get anything remotely public, and we think ours is the way to go. Uh, sometimes the public option people have found that have, have sounded to me as if they perceive the single payer folks as a threat. Do you think it's working that way? Um, I don't think they should view it as a threat. I mean, we really need to push push them in the right direction, or we're going to wind up with a, a poorly planned public option that's just going to become a healthcare ghetto, a dumping ground for the insurance industry to dump people they don't want to pay for, who they think are going to be too costly to care for. And then they can turn around and use it as an excuse to say, see, the public system doesn't work. And I think that's a a fear we have. We have to get a, a, you know, we need to look at, you know, single payer as being the most viable answer to all the dilemmas we're facing and push that agenda and make sure that we come up with something that's actually going to work or we're going to be looking at another crisis a few years down the road. And that's not that's not going to fly anymore. There's too much at stake in this fight. Now, a lot of people are hearing about something called a trigger option. What is that and what sort of uh, threat does it pose? Well, I think the trigger option is if you hit a certain point in cost or lack of accessibility, then it triggers that the government steps in and 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 takes over and funds something on that level. But the reality is, the most efficient way to have the government involved is through a single payer system. These kind of you know mismatched put a little of this and a little bit of that together, are really not going to address that serious issue of cost and, um, and accessibility. Mm-hmm. So if you want, if the government's going to eventually pick up the tab, let's have the most efficient way for the government to pick up the tab, yeah. which is a single-payer system. Or right, you went out into the streets, the, mo- the mood, I'm, I'm guessing, was good. Do you really feel like you, feel like you won something today? Absolutely. Absolutely we won something today. To, to go in such a short period of time from they, them saying unequivocally it's off the table to actually having a congressional hearing, I think is a huge step forward in, in, in pushing the single-payer agenda in this country. All right, Jerry Jenkins, thank you so much. Co-president of the California Nurses Association, thanks for being with us and for being in Washington. Thank you. You're watching Grit TV.